parents want to give their children the best life possible. But what if you believe the right place for this was on the other side of the world? In 2013, Tanya Cleary was considering uprooting her son Jordan from everything and everyone he knew in the UK to start afresh in Australia. One year on, we'll catch up with Jordan and Tanya to find out how and where they are now. Twelve months ago, Mum Tanya believed a move down under could be the ticket to a better future for son Jordan, who has Asperger's. I raised Jordan on my own. It's been really hard and I want him to have good life opportunities. But she worried taking him away from everything he knew would be too big a risk. What do you find difficult about change? Everything about it, really. So one year later, which side of the world do Tanya and Jordan now call home? Mum has definitely made the correct and right decision. Australia's the number one location for Brits leaving the UK in search of a better life. The climate, outdoor living and the chance to start afresh all add to the country's appeal. But moving halfway around the globe isn't as easy as it seems, and it doesn't work for everybody, with many returning home, their dreams shattered. One year ago, Tanya and Jordan had just a week to see whether Australia could offer them the lifestyle they desperately wanted. When that week was up, they'd be faced with a decision that would change their lives forever. Whether to stay in the UK or to make a permanent move to Australia. Today we'll find out what happened next. After three flights and 12,000 miles, Tanya and Jordan arrived in Perth for their trial week. Having spent 18 hours in the air, they were exhausted but raring to go. So it's good to be here now. It's really good, good to that. <laughs> I'm sure I'm ready for the challenge. <laughs> Sorry. Ahead of them lay one of the biggest challenges they were ever likely to face, as well as a life-changing decision. In 2013, the Clearies were living in Hertfordshire, but single mum Tanya had been dreaming of a life down under for years. Going to show something that I've wanted to do for quite a long, long time. My mum and dad travelled to all around the show when they were younger and I was born in New Zealand and, you know, looking at their pictures and all of the things that they've done, I find it amazing. Son Jordan, then 15, has Asperger's syndrome. It affects his communication, understanding and mainly social skills. I raised Jordan on my own. It's been really hard because when he was younger he was really challenging. But we've had a lot of family support in our lives. I've had my mum and dad and my sister, who's been a great help. Mine and Jordan's relationship is quite strong. It's hard to describe, really, because we love each other so much. He's brilliant, Jordan. He's such a funny boy. And he's very, very loving. Both Tanya and Jordan loved being outdoors. Look at that. Look at his hair. He's got, like, a hairstyle but found the weather in the UK a big letdown. Sometimes winter, autumn, it gets really boring. Stuck in the house all day. There's lots to do in Australia. And there's not much to do here at the moment. Look at that one, Jordan. Uh. With Jordan passionate about animals and nature, Tanya believed he would thrive in Australia. I love animals. To me, it's something about them that seems more human some kind of special bond between us. Australia is more outside, it's more open. There's a lot more job opportunities when he's older out there. But Jordan's condition meant a potential move down under could be a massive undertaking. It's quite a big move for Jordan, school. And the challenges are quite difficult for you, aren't they? Yeah. Emigrating would also mean leaving behind the close family network vital to them both. Leaving my mum and dad and Jordan's grandparents and granddad one behind is going to be very mm. difficult and that's going to be the drawback. But besides of them, we have to think about us and our decisions and see how it goes. Yeah. You're at a good age yeah. now. So there's too much to gain and nothing to lose. 
Taking Jordan away from the stability of life in the UK would be a big risk, but both Tanya and Jordan were keen to make the move. The week ahead would decide where their future lay. Tanya and Jordan spent their trial week in Mandurah, a popular seaside suburb an hour's drive south of Perth. Home for the week was this two-bedroom cottage. Shower. Oh, oh my god! Oh. <laughs> Stop it! What kind of spider is that? Oh, I have no idea. I don't like spiders. Oh no, no, they look more like a locust to me. Oh. And my eyeballs are going to be alert now. It wasn't quite the welcome they'd been expecting, but it hadn't dampened Jordan's spirits. What I'm most looking forward to doing in Australia is swimming, snorkeling. Bird watching, we could have a better life if we move to Australia. I feel sad leaving my family, my pet, my teachers, my school, and my friends behind. He'd find it more difficult than other children to settle in, but that's something that I'm aware of and we'll know how to deal with at the time. So it's not, even though it's a concern, we'll manage it together. I think have a look for potential spiders. And locusts, Tanya. Back in the UK, the Clearies were living in a three-bedroom detached house in Hertfordshire. It's a good place to live. It's been good for Jordan. We've lived here for nine years now. And it's cosy, really. They had a budget of £300,000 to spend in Australia. So what did they want for their money? A large house with a large garden, more room for my animals to run in. Possibly in the suburbs, about 30 minute commute into the city. Three bedroom property with a large garden. To give Tanya and Jordan a taste of the Perth property market, we showed them three properties, based on what they could afford, what they wanted, and one in between. The first property was in the Lakelands area. 50 minutes from Perth, its close proximity to beautiful beaches and parks meant it should have been perfect for Jordan. Wow. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, look. Yeah, this... Is what I call a bedroom. I think I'd be having this room. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, this is one funky living room. <laughs> it's a really big room, isn't it? Yeah, I like you it. Look at it like this on this sort of level. Got another house on your left. Yeah. It's quite close as well. I'd rather be not overlooked at all. But it's something that I'd have to maybe compromise about. Tanya wasn't quite sold. Did the garden make any difference? Is that fake grass? We want to have animals over here. Oh, yeah. So that might be a little bit unhygienic. I like the garden. I like the garden because it's low maintenance. But if it meets our needs, I don't know. So this house with double, like two times the size of the garden would be really good, wouldn't it? Yeah. That'd be perfect. Although it didn't quite satisfy the Cleary's high expectations, this house had some potential. But with Tanya's budget of £300,000, could they afford it? Let's see how much it's worth. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, it's really, That's really cheap. Mmm. A lot cheaper than I was expecting. I'm happy with it. Buoyed up by what their budget could potentially achieve, Tanya and Jordan moved on to property number two. It was situated in a sought-after area of Old Hall's Head, which, despite being just minutes from the city centre, had a very rural feel to it. It was also close to a specialist school, which was a big plus for Tanya. Wow. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Open plan again. Yeah, I like... It was a positive start, and it didn't take long for Jordan to decide where he could be sleeping. This is nice. Yeah, I like this one. This one would be used as a good bird watching tower. Yeah, this is my room. I picked it. <laughs> the garden was a big improvement over the previous property. I 
personally love, love this garden. Yeah. It's like a little nature reserve. Mm. It's very nice. Look at all these beautiful trees, plants. Nice and secluded, so you're not overlooked by any neighbours. It's big enough to have a hutch full of rabbits or guinea pigs. But we can have a dog here, can not we? Yeah. 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 Mm. What's that? Oh, that's huge, isn't it? Wow. It's like a big shed, isn't it? And if I wanted to turn this large space into something, it'd be a natural history museum. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, like this has to be like an eight for me. Me? Ten. You like it? Yeah. yeah. The house was a big hit with Tanya and Jordan, but was it within reach of their £300,000 budget? So we'll see how much it is. Yep. Ooh, oh, that's, that's pretty really good. That's really, really, really good value for money, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. if we were to come to Australia and have a house like this, would you be happy? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be really happy. Despite being £30,000 over budget, things were definitely swinging in favour of this house. The final property was in the residential suburb of Baldivis, halfway between Perth and Mandurah. It's a very long hallway, hasn't it? Mm. Quite nice, so it's quite bright. It's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite big. Again, it's open plan. I like this living room. It feels homey to me, which makes me feel more comfortable. Yeah, it's got a nice feel to it, isn't it? He's so cute. Aww. It's very pretty colour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't like the kitchen. No. It's quite small and basic. <clears throat> Not for me. The kitchen distinctly underwhelmed Tanya, and the garden wasn't much better. Yeah, no, not yeah I don't like the garden. I want to get to know my neighbours. And, but I think you should also have some privacy. OK, so if we came to Australia to live in here, how would you feel about this house? I wouldn't like living in this house. I'd actually prefer a home, actually. Yeah. It wasn't the dream house, but did the price increase its appeal? OK, John, turn the card over. Mmm! Oh. It's quite a reasonable price, considering it's a little bit closer to Perth City. Yeah. I wouldn't pay that price for this house, though, because it's not the house that I want. It was affordable, but just not what they had in mind. It had been a day of mixed results on the property front. The first house made a good impression, but the fake grass let it down. Property number two had the wow factor with a large garden and potential for a small natural history museum. The final property felt too exposed but did represent good value for money. So overall, what did Jordan and Tanya make of Aussie homes? Based on our experience of Australian property, we're waiting for... Australia! Australia. One of my um, biggest fears of moving to a show was houses and prices and affordability. But now, obviously, I've seen for myself that I can afford it. It's something that's positive, and hopefully, we can move forward with that. Houses were good, and the streets are good. So, in a way, I can't imagine me and my mum living in them. Aussie homes have got a thumbs up from Jordan and Tanya. But finding the right job would be key if Tanya's plans for a life down under were to become any more than a pipe dream. Back in the UK, she was a qualified social worker. I enjoy the role that I do. I find it very interesting, very challenging, and I enjoy the fact that you're out in the community. We arranged for Tanya to spend time at a local child protection unit to explore her job prospects down under. Earning enough money would be crucial if she was to afford a move. Salary is very important. Obviously, I'm on my own with Jordan, so it's one income. Deborah Gould, district director of the unit, showed Tanya around. This is the Metro, mm. the Department of Child Protection, and this is Joondalup. So that's that, that's our boundaries. Okay. It's quite um, a big office, isn't it? Hi, Jordan. Oh, hi. Meanwhile, Jordan headed off to check out his possible career prospects at an animal rescue centre. I'd like to introduce you to one of WA's brush tail possums. Oh. Very cute, oh. but very common also. This little guy was being caught in one of our recent fires in oh. our northern suburbs. And unfortunately, he's got some burnt feet. So that's what we've been doing with him, is oh. we've been looking after his feet for him. 
So when he gets better, can we release him into the wild or is he going to stay here? That's the goal. That's good. Hans, Joey feeding time. We're going to give you a bottle, Jordan. See if you can feed one of our Joeys. And you can see they're absolutely starving. Okay, here we go. Perfect, Jordan. Oh, you're so cute. Being with the animals was an absolute pleasure because I absolutely love them. Jordan's special bond with animals certainly seemed to work with these little guys. It'd be a dream come true for me to work here with animals. Jordan was sold. <laughs> but how was Tanya getting on? You've looked at my CV. Do you think that I'm an employable candidate? I certainly would think that you're very employable. So, um, you know, you've got the correct qual qualifications, you've got the experience. Mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of social work, mm -hmm. is that um, you can practice social work in most countries. Yeah. There's, there's so much similarities. What would my salary be? The salary starts at uh, about just over 60000 Dollars, mm -hmm. talking dollars, and that that goes to about eighty-two, just over eighty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's good to hear. It had been a really encouraging visit for Tanya. I learnt today that the salary that I'd get here would be twenty thousand pound more than in the UK, which is absolutely brilliant. It gives me the opportunity to come out here, start the lifestyle that we I want for myself and Jordan, um, and it's just really good news. I'm really really happy about it. Based on my work experience today, I'm going to be voting for... Australia. Tanya's earning potential had given her dream of a new life down under a massive boost. But any move was about more than just money. She wanted to improve the quality of life for herself and Jordan and believed the Australian lifestyle could be the key to achieving that. The pair spent the day exploring the great outdoors at Yanchep National Park. It's beautiful colour, isn't it? I'm enjoying spending time with Mum at the park. It's a beautiful day, boiling hot, of course, and it's filled with beautiful green plants and trees and beautiful birds. Couldn't ask for anything more, really, digging. Can you see him close up? Yeah. He's so beautiful. When we've been bird watching in the UK, we do it quickly. <laughs> so here, because it's so warm and bright and, you know, we can spend time. This is what it's all about. It'd just be awesome living in this country. Okay, Jordan, are you going to try and... Why? I don't feel there is anything holding me back at the moment from the move. I mean, I've been thinking about my friends and my family, but I'm having fun and too much fun. The Australian lifestyle seemed to have lived up to its reputation. So was Tanya and Jordan's vote another clean sweep? Based on our lifestyle experience today, we're going to be voting for... A future life in Australia was looking more and more likely, but the finances would need to be right if the Clearies were to realise their dream. We prepared a comparison of costs in the UK and Australia, starting with a weekly food shop. So the cheese is a little, little bit more expensive in Australia? Yeah, the bread is more expensive in Australia as well. Are you in here with a calculator? £84.26. Yeah. That's the total for the English weekly shop. £103.92. So the Australian total is more. £20 a week more for food didn't seem to phase Tanya, but there were still the bigger outgoings to face. She based her sons on the second house they'd seen. Our dream home that we've seen in Australia is valued at 330000 So the repayments each month will be £1,130. It's actually quite a significant amount. It was a substantial sum, but could Tanya's Australian wages help out? We will be £1,110 per month better off living in Australia. 
That's good. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. For us to come out and be on that salary, we know that we can do it. Yeah. And yeah. have a comfortable life in Australia. It was time to put the figures to the vote. Based on the cost of living, we are going to be voting for... Australia. Financially, at least, it was a done deal. <laughs> Tanya may have figured out how to afford the dream life down under on paper, but there were still outstanding issues to be resolved before the big decision. In the UK, Jordan has had a problematic time at school because there's been a lack of educational facilities available to him. And I won't have the family support, it's just going to be me and Jordan in Australia. So it's important for me to get the school right. We arranged for Tanya and Jordan to meet the McTeer family, who'd moved to Australia from the UK ten years ago. Their son Fraser and his friend Jake were also on the autistic spectrum. Could the McTeer's own experience lay Tanya's concerns to rest? The local public high school um, actually has an, an autism extension program that's attached to their high school. Yeah. Um, so it's like a separate unit that Fraser can go in and Jake and do um, like social skills. That's really good. Because um, in England, it's, we haven't got that. And it's run by people that really understand autism, which is a, is, a big, yeah, is a really big help. It was reassuring news for Tanya. Meanwhile, Jordan was busy making some new friends. It says, Miranda, I love, I love you, will you? Oh, that is so adorable. Oh, that is adorable. Oh, I think I'll do that when I get married. If you moved to Australia, would you marry an Australian woman? Yeah, definitely. They're much more attractive than our Finnish women. <laughs> Australia seemed to be winning hands down on all fronts, but there was still one obstacle left to overcome, the reality of leaving loved ones behind in the UK. Hello. Hi Tans, hi George, hope you're having a lovely time in Australia. Hi Tanya, hi Jordan, hope you've had an amazing week and it's been everything you've had to be. Hi Jordan. Hi, hi Tanya. <laughs> hello Jordan, I hope you're having a wonderful time. Hello Tanya, hello Jordan. I hope you're nice and warm in, uh, in Australia. Um, it's freezing here and uh, we do envy you. Tanya is one of the most hard-working people I know. She's also very strong-minded um, and she's a wonderful mother to Jordan. Of course. If Jordan goes, that's, that's really going to be hard. But he's going to miss you. <laughs> he is adorable, we love him and actually we really will miss him. I laugh with him. <laughs> I don't want them to go because it's a long way and uh, I won't be able to pop in and see Jordan. <laughs> if it makes them happy, I think that their move to Australia would be wonderful for them. I would miss Jordan. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to be around for many more years. No. I'm pushing 70 now. So, uh, you know, if that's what makes it tick for them, good. Jordan, you're going to be sadly missed here. We're going to miss your antics and your misbehaviours, which is, is, is you all over. But I hope you do well out there, and we're sorely going to miss you, mate. All I'm hoping is great things for you and Jordan. I know you, you, you will succeed in Australia, and um, because you're, you're, both, you're both strong enough to do it. Obviously, if it makes you happy and it's the best for you, then I wish you all the luck. Um... No, oh, no, he's not crying, is he? I will miss you if you go. But if it's the best thing for you, then I can only wish you all the best. Bye. He's crying. Oh, bless him. <laughs> Hmm. That was not fair on Grandad. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't like seeing him cry. Mm. Never saw him do that before. Yeah. How does it make you feel seeing that? I really want to see them all again after watching it. Mm. Kind of miss home now. Do you? Yeah. 
watching that, I understand how my family, my friends are going to miss me because mm. everyone really loves me and I love them. Mm. Hearing from family and friends had brought home the reality of what Tanya and Jordan would be leaving behind in the UK. So had they been persuaded to give up everything and everyone they loved for a new life down under? My week in Australia has been absolutely fantastic. It's just so much fun and it's a great experience to have. If we move to Perth, then I think the future for me and Jordan will be brighter. I'll be better off financially. And there's more support for Jordan and his disability, which is really, really important as well. I really miss my friends and family. But I don't want to go home at the moment because I'm having too much fun, of course. me and Jordan building a new life in Perth. Based on our experiences of being in Australia, we're going to live in... Australia! So I think that would have a better life in Australia than in the UK. Mm. And it would just be a happier, more better life in Australia. When they started out on their week down under, Tanya and Jordan knew what they wanted, but were unsure if they could make it work. With education and work prospects looking better than they could ever have hoped, however, it seemed as if mother and son were all set for a new life in Australia. So one year since we last saw them, have Tanya and Jordan made the move? It's July 2013 and the clear is our living in... Hertfordshire in the UK, but not for long. We are leaving tomorrow and then it's extremely exciting. Their week in Perth left Tanya and Jordan with no doubts Australia was where they wanted to spend the rest of their lives. We had a really, really good time and decided to uh, go for it. People mm. were extremely friendly. They were just kind, helpful people and I loved the Australians. Yeah, it was more of a laid back approach, wasn't it? Yeah. And the wild duck was amazing, wasn't it? Especially the parrots. Yeah, beautiful parrots. I think that Australia can offer us um, a better lifestyle. Everything about it just seems nice. <laughs> so we're going to go for it. The pair have wasted no time in making the move a reality. It's been less than three months since they returned from their trial week. It is quick. It's like a quick decision to go. Um, but I feel that it's the right decision to go. There's nothing to hold us back. Is it? No, not really. Mm. <laughs> Although they're both keen to get going, Tanya's worried things might have moved a little too quickly for Jordan. Jordan, I think, has been a little bit anxious about going. I am worried about going to a new school because Mum said it's more like a high school. And I'm saying, oh, this is going to get complicated now. <laughs> and then it's not going to be a easy work. It's going to be more hard work this time. And I promise myself, just keep going, you can do it. Mm. He's had a lot of bad experiences at school in the UK. So, you know, even though we're happy to be going, it's obviously a worry. They find it difficult with change autistic children. Um, so we're taking time to sort of calm down. But he'd be all right. Tanya secured a job with the Department of Child Protection in Perth, and the last few weeks have seen her and Jordan quickly pack up their lives in the UK. The main thing that we've had to do is rehome the animals, isn't it? I'm very sad that the animals have gone because I've known them for many, many years and they're obviously family to me, so... Yeah, it's been emotional for me without any pets. I think we will get some more animals in Australia, especially dogs. Can't live without dogs. But it's not just pets the pair have had to say goodbye to. The night before their departure, there's a family gathering to say farewell. Oh, I miss Jordan. Tara. He's in our house a lot. He's at home with us a lot. It's come very quickly. The goodbyes. It's sinking a little bit now, isn't it? You know, that it's happening. And it was sinking tomorrow when we, you know, when we go to the airport. 
The next morning, Tanya and Jordan are about to set off for their new life. It's been quite busy the last few days and emotional, but it's time to go. We just need to get there and enjoy it. Later, it's May 2014, and Tanya and Jordan are living on the other side of the world in Perth, Australia. It was, it feels like a bit of a dream when we first came over here now. It doesn't feel real. You know, it's nervous but exciting at the same time. Definitely. When I first got off the plane, I was like, this is it, JC. This is your new life, your new chance to have a better future. Mm. Off you go, mate. Again, on the other side of the world without family was a daunting prospect for single mum Tanya. But literally, it was just me, Jordan, and a couple of suitcases. So, yeah, I knew I had challenges ahead of me. So, getting here was one step, and then I had many steps to get to where I am now. Slimming down on possessions may have been easy, but leaving loved ones was tough. It was quite stressful. Um, and emotional, because obviously I left mum and dad at the airport. It was especially very difficult for me to cope and deal with living without my family. I mean, nan and granddad, definitely without them is like, kind of like the end of the world for me, because I love my grand nan and granddad so much. The first few weeks of their new life saw a flurry of activity. I had to get Jordan into school and obviously get my a start date for work. You know, it's like I had to get a car. But I think it's been really hard doing it on my own um, because I've been trying to sort everything out and be there for Jordan. It's been ups and downs, but I expected that, you know, because I think if you're going to come over here thinking life's going to be beautiful, then that's not re reality. Um, so it's about being realistic and, yeah, just working hard to what you want. Tanya's main priority on arriving was to get Jordan settled into his new school. It's a massive change for Jordan. You know, it's bad enough change of school, but going to a new country. The first day at school was like a horror movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> because I was so scared and frightened. But despite first day nerves, Jordan soon settled in. It's like my own evolutionary step, if you know what I mean. In that, see, my habitat is changing. and. And, uh, and I have to adapt to my new environment. School were very supportive, they work well with Jordan, they understand Jordan. And he has a lot more support from the disability service. My new school was a good school, it's got good teachers that are friendly and kind, very kind people. Selling at school is a big business by the way, I mean, it's a little frightening. And uh, this is a part of fear that I have to get rid of to conquer it, conquer my fear. Still have to get used to them, and around and around we go. School was really important. That was the main thing that I needed to get right um, for him to settle into Perth, and I have got it. I did get it right. With Jordan sorted, Tanya had some adapting of her own to do. Settling into a new job was, again, quite difficult. It's a new office, new people, new country. I didn't have an idea how things worked. It's taken me quite a while to get used to the job. But now I'm really enjoying it. Six months after the pair arrived in the country, Tanya bought a property. And home for her and Jordan is now this three-bedroom bungalow in the quiet suburb of Tapping. It's a good house. I really enjoy living here. It's a nice area. It's really close to work. I think the house is perfect for me and Jordan. It's quite big. Well, it's not... It's big enough, it's isn't it? Yeah. Jordan's got his own space, which is quite nice. So he's got um, his own little theatre room. Own, so, no, it's a living room. Oh, living room. Yeah. He's got his own little living room and bedroom. So, I call it the West Wing. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> not content with a wing to himself, Jordan has big plans afoot for one of the bedrooms. This is my mini natural history museum. Uh, Mum wants it to be a spare bedroom. Not gonna happen, Mum. <laughs> So it's going to remind me of the good time I had in the Natural History Museum in London. I loved that museum. If I would marry that building, I would, because I just loved it so much. Tanya and 
Tanya, meanwhile, is particularly pleased with the garden. One of the reasons why I like this house in particular was because it had a quite a good sized garden compared to some of the other houses in the area. Where Jordan's already been busy. So over here, this is my miniature wildlife garden. I've made it especially for the Australian wildlife and I've constructed it all by myself with a little help from Mum, of course. Having said goodbye to his beloved pets back home, he's wasted no time in assembling a new menagerie. I have never had chickens before, so it's um, a new animal experience for me. And it's a very happy one as well. I raised them from when they were inside the egg and they hatched into beautiful, cute, fluffy, yellow little babies and I watched them grow into these adults that now play fresh eggs for us every day. And I thank them for laying eggs. It makes me feel like a dad or mum to them. And I just love being a parent to them. It makes me feel like they're my kids. This is Fudge the dog. And over there near the wildlife garden, you've got Sludge the cat. Love animals, so yeah. but I, I think just having that freedom and like, that space. I beautiful. like little piggies as well. Mm. I don't mm. too many animals, Jordan. <laughs> having all these pets and animals makes me feel just so happy to be with them, because in my opinion, animals are a better company than humans, and I just love them so much. I mean, it feels like I can almost communicate with them. I just love being with pets and animals. And it's not just animals Jordan's been making connections with. So Jordan has made a lot of friends really quickly. Um, he's done really well. I did surprise myself with lots of friends, mainstream and ex-support, which is the system I'm in for kids who have a disability like me. And um, so, yeah, it's all good. Mm. He's got a couple of little mates in particular that he spend, you know, goes to cinema with. Um, and they hang out and, you know, they can come over here and have sleepovers and he can go there. He didn't have that relationship with any of his friends in the UK. So it's really positive and it's lovely. I'd like to see Mum make a few more friends out here because she hasn't got many friends out there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, take me, for example, I've got more than a hundred at school. Mm. Mm. You've got a better social life than me, haven't you? Mm. That's because I'm funny and girls like me. That's good! <laughs> a move down under for the pair was always about more time outdoors. And so far, Australia's delivering on all fronts. I love the climate, I love the warm weather, I love waking up and it's warm every morning. Skies are blue, you know, I think it just makes you feel happier. Like, one of the reasons why we wanted to come to Australia was for the outdoor living, the outdoor lifestyle, and, yeah, that's been, over the summer months, it's been really good. We've been down to the beach a lot with the dog. Um, beautiful nature walks, there's beautiful parks here. Um, that's a beautiful country. <laughs> yeah. No, there's nothing I don't like about Australia. I love Australia. It's a very beautiful country. Take a look at what's out there. In the outback, you've got the kangaroos that are taller than a man. I mean, that's awesome. And yes, Australian, Australia has definitely given me a bigger opportunity to love and connect to nature. And it's not only wildlife that's been catching Jordan's eye. Yeah, I still think uh, um, Aussie girls are more attractive than British girls. I'd, as I'm so sorry to say that to lots of British women who are out there watching this. But um, I am getting a, I will possibly be getting a girlfriend soon because lots and lots of girls do like me at school. They get all nervous and laugh around me. And uh, boys are like, JC, they like you. <laughs> it's been a life-changing year for Tanya and Jordan. That bond has got even stronger. Um, but it's still a relationship where it's just me and him, so it can be quite full on. Good, we good, me and Jordan, um, and we're there for each other, which is great. You know, he knows when I'm up there, he'll come and give me a cuddle or, you know, I'll comfort him and he's feeling a bit worried. So we have each other, we're cool, yeah. So do they have any regrets about leaving the UK? No. Think about the UK. Um, I definitely don't miss the bad weather. <laughs> um, I miss my friends and family, but generally, I really love it here, and I'm not going back to the UK. <laughs>
I really, really like it. It's, it's definitely a better lifestyle out here. Things I want it to work. And that's, I think, the difference. I want to be here, I want it to work. So I'm going to make it work. It's definitely changed my life for the better. The main thing Australia has to offer me is confidence and a whole bunch of things that give positivity into my life. I don't think I'll move back. I'll definitely move back for long holidays, but not forever. Not forever. So we're not quite living the dream yet, but um, we're getting there. And, you know, within a few years, I'm sure, you know, I'll be living my dream. Definitely. Same here. Mm. Mum has definitely made the correct and right decision of moving me and her down to Aussie land and um, it has definitely provided us with a good hope and a good future. I think it's just a further, further future. Mm. A move to Australia was always about Tanya and Jordan getting to spend more time outdoors. And it looks like their new life down under is delivering exactly that. We wish them and all their pets a very happy future down under. And Jordan, make sure you let us know when that Natural History Museum's open. Following the work of British flying doctors on the other side of the world with the helicopter heroes Down Under, who are racing to save a little boy involved in an accident at 11.45. Next, though, the £30,000 house with homes and a bammer.